I'm Molly Superthorpe. Welcome to my channel, where I offer bite-sized tutorials and demonstrations in calligraphy and hand lettering, and upload a brand new video every Friday. Today we'll be hand lettering a Christmas greeting and then illustrating a Christmas wreath around it. To get started, I have this blank square canvas, and I'm going to give myself some letter guides so that I can just use it as like a good basis for my lettering. So here in my calligraphy composition maker, I'm choosing my modern 65 degree pattern brush and uh, let's enlarge that somewhat. And now without lifting my pen, I'm just quickly coloring in the whole canvas so that this simple lettering guide uh, can be used in the background here. I'll reduce the opacity somewhat. New layer, let's switch over to black. I'll use a pencil brush. I have my own favorite, but you can use any of the pencils that actually come with Procreate as well. I'll just write out the classic Merry Christmas, and I'll start by sketching it out just to have a look at, you know, the basic composition, the spacing, things like that. I don't usually spend a lot of time on these sketches. It's more like the equivalent of an illustrator's thumbnail sketches. Um, Let's see, I just really work out like proportion, ratio, and then stacking, sort of, you know, how the lines are going to work together and what allowances I may or may not have to uh, make so that they fit together well. I use my selection tool quite a bit to make adjustments. So I'm looking, for example, um, here at how the tail of the Y and the cross that I made on this T are not intersecting well. So I'm going to erase the tail of that Y. And I think I'll make it come above the word Mary. And then I will adjust the cross of the T to sort of hug or almost like mirror the curve of this Y. Yeah. Okay, and then to even out the proportions, sort of to make and ultimately make like a shape roughly like this, knowing that I'm going to make a wreath around it, which is going to be obviously <laughs> circular, um, I don't want to have too much blank space down here. So I'm going to work on this tail for a little while just to get it exactly as I want. Thankfully, since this is a festive message, those flourishes are very appropriate and they're going to look really fun and really add to that festive look and feel. Here, um, CH is a wonderful opportunity to make a ligature. And by that, I mean two letters that are connected, sort of inextricably linked, um, sort of drawn in a way where you wouldn't be able to really easily separate one from the other, almost like Siamese twins of letters. So you see how the C merges into the H. I'll just, this is now, now that I know that that's the type of ligature I want to make, it's just a question of proportion. How do I want this H angle to go and how far out do I want this loop? Yeah, okay, I like that. Okay, don't be afraid in your work to make really big flourishes. Um, very often I think that people want to make small flourishes just because they don't want to distract from the overall uh, composition. But in reality, if, if a flourish is too small, it can actually be more distracting than a large one because it's out of proportion with the letters. Let me just show you what I mean by that. So these are two C's and you know, the height of the C's are the same, but the size of the flourishes at the top, these curls, is different. And I mean, personally speaking, I prefer this one. Um, any letters that come after it, let's just like draw a few more letters. The proportion of this flourish to the overall size of the C is much better in my view than this small little flourish that feels too insignificant. Uh, worse yet, actually, would be a flourish like this on the C that really feels insignificant. This would just be so much better if we drew that down a bit 
actually a lot. You see? Now, proportion-wise, ratio-wise, this fits much better. And honestly, if we enlarged this flourish even more, I think it would look even more realistic. So you can do really fancy things. Okay, I know I'm getting off track here, but something I'm asked about a lot is, is flourishing. And I think that this is a helpful thing to keep in mind. The smaller the flourish, you need to check on the ratio and proportion to the overall word. Back to our Merry Christmas. So you can see how quickly I sketch here. I put very little effort into polishing and perfecting at this stage. I'm really, really just looking at uh, proportion and how the words sit with each other. All right, now I'm gonna go over this one more time, again with pencil and refine it just a little bit more. I'll reduce the opacity quite dramatically, make a new layer, and now when I go over this, I'm still not spending too, too much time, but all of those little, you know, redos that I had done previously with the pencil are going to be taken care of now because I'm just going over this once more. I'll make a new layer for the Christmas so that I can easily move it in a moment if, if I need to. flourishing is that the rounder or more circular a flourish is generally the more playful and the more modern and the more elliptical or elongated your flourish curls are and curves the more formal the more traditional the more old-fashioned I have quite a circular flourish going on here and that's specifically what I wanted I want to take up a lot of the space in this region but a more formal version would have been like that, more elliptical, elongated. So let's take this Christmas word, moving it slightly down and to the right. Now I will merge it down with the word Mary, and I'm going to, with snapping turned on, I'm just going to loosely center this on the page, which means I drag it until I see these two golden lines appear. So let me reduce the opacity on this. And now I get out my calligraphy pen and I really refine this. In my calligraphy nibs brush pack, I have this fine point calligraphy pen, smooth, which I use for the vast majority of my work. I'll make a few strokes on the page to really try to figure out what brush size I want. I will use a couple um, strokes with different pressures to figure this out. Zoom out. Yeah, I think that the thickness of that downstroke is roughly what I'm gonna want. starting here with Christmas because I'm already on this layer is with a very small eraser brush I'm going to adjust where these hit the baseline I want them to be more crisp this is a personal preference choice but I just like it um, I'm also going to round off that R let's see I could have the eye be flat or I could have the eye be kind of curved or angled rather Kind of like that, why not? I don't know, for some reason it feels kind of festive.
happy with this. So let me turn off my guides. So let's make our wreath. New layer. Now we're going to turn on radial guides. So coming over to canvas, turn on drawing guides, then immediately click edit drawing guide. By default, you get this 2D grid. So I'm coming to symmetry, options, radial, and I'm making a radial guide. I want to turn on rotational symmetry and make sure that assisted drawing is turned on as well. To work with this, you can see that I have the guides visible, but I don't have to have the guides be visible for me to adhere to them. So I'm actually going to turn them off because they're a little bit distracting. And I just know that because the word assisted appears here under my layer, I know that when I write, it will adhere to my grid. So I can turn that on and off at any time, by the way, by tapping it and hitting drawing assist. And if I make a brand new layer, drawing assist won't be turned on. So I'll have to manually turn it on by tapping and clicking drawing assist so that that new layer can also adhere to my guides. What I am going to do is draw a circle first. So I'm going to make a layer for myself uh, that's blank and not set to drawing assist. I'll create a circle and then I'll snap it. Then I'll click edit shape. And because I made a quick shape, which is to say that I drew a shape and I didn't lift my pen until it snapped to be perfect, I can hit edit shape and I can adjust this right away to a circle. I can hit my selection tool here and, and that goes away. I can hit my selection tool again and I have snapping still turned on. So I'm gonna snap this there to the center of the canvas. Now, if I reduce the opacity on this a lot, I have sort of, you know, a guideline ring to go around. Now I'm on my assisted layer. Let's start with a color like green, just because it'll be more fun. I'm still on my calligraphy pen because I like the illustration to sort of match the stroke characteristics of the calligraphy. So we're just going to make some really nice, cute florals here. I'm going to turn off my circle. I don't need that anymore. I'm going to make a new layer, tap once, turn on drawing assist. That's because I want to use a different color and I want to be able to easily keep those colors separated onto separate layers so that I can recolor them easily later. So we'll get our classic red out. I'm going to use a little trick by using a monoline brush as a stamp. So I'm coming down to my monoline brush and I'm going to tap it once to see roughly the size it is right now. And then using the brush sizing, I can increase and decrease the size of my berries. Yeah, and then those are going to be cute little perfect circles, which I think are nice um, in like a more minimalist way. So I'll put, no, let's make that smaller. Put some of these around. The cool thing about symmetry guides is that the erase tool also works around the circle. So if I erase this dot, it will erase all of the simil similar dots. Now what I want is for the Merry Christmas to feel more centered. This is where optical centering really comes in. If something is perfectly centered, like mathematically, that doesn't mean it looks centered to the eyes. So first I think it needs to be smaller. So I'll come to my calligraphy layer and I'll make it a bit smaller. Now I'll turn off snapping so that I can get really tiny movements. Yeah. And now I'll recolor the text, and the way that I like to do that is to make a blank layer over my art layer, tap it once and hit clipping mask. You tap it and you hit fill layer, and the fill only affects what's underneath it. If I unclip it, you'll see that it covers the entire canvas, but as soon as I clip it, it only affects the calligraphy in that layer. So I think I like this being red as opposed to green, definitely better than black, but it's still not centered in the way that I would like. Yeah, and now let's just change the background to something a little bit creamier because this stark white is not very festive to me. It's subtle, but I like that. 
If you make any kind of artwork following along with this tutorial, I would love to see it. So if you tag me in your work on Instagram, I will be able to, and I always do appreciate that. I'll see you back here next week.